Hello, my name is Jingo Nelly, and today we are going to be looking at elements of production management. But before I begin off, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It will bring you some good luck in your forthcoming exams. And with this to begin off, um, we have in operations and production. Now, these are two different things. Now, with, product, with production, it deals with producing a physical good. Now, with operations, it deals with services. So, when we are defining this, we have to separate them accordingly. So, when I'm defining a list of operations, I'm to do with a service. Then, or uh, production, I'm to do with a product. So, defining here, we are having operations function but I can also get to have a production function. So with the operations function consists of activities uh, directly related to producing, uh, to providing services. And uh, with the production function consists, consists of all activities directly related to producing goods. So these are two different terms. Uh, they are having the same statements, but they differ on the output. The other one, it's a service, and the other, it's good. So when I'm to move on to the next, which is production or operations management. Now, the only way I can use the two in one is when I merge up, I say, oper like for the previous one, operations function or production function, then I say it consists of all activities directly related to producing goods or providing services then we are to come to operations management or organize operations management or production management uh, they have merged they have merged them so i can say it's defined as the the design uh, operation and improvement of the system that uh, create and deliver the firm's primary products and services now they have merged up the two if at all i was to define one like what is production management i would end by saying firms product uh, primary products if i'm defining operations management i'll end up with saying the firms are uh, primary services then from there we're having an illustration showing an organization and an organization uh, uh, where, where basically the production and the operations are in the middle meaning they act as a bridge to to call to 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 provide uh, to to provide a connecting factor between the finance and the marketing department we're having so many departments but they show that uh, they, they they act as a bridge that is the production and operations so moving on to the next slide which is saying uh, why study operations management now with this we're having uh, uh, the operations management whereby uh, it looks as at aspects of uh, uh, like maybe it helps the thematic approach to op op or to organizational processes now this deals with delivering the products then uh, moving on to another term why why we study operations management it's because it increases competitive ad advantage now this is through uh, the company or the organization being innovative hence providing that element that aspect of it being uh having like that aspect of being uh having the competitive advantage then uh we are having the it aids in cross-functional applications now this is um uh, this is to do with uh, enabling different departments work together and the last one is uh business education or career or opportunities now with business education it's more to do with training the workers and with career opportunities it's more to do with attending seminars so that when uh, uh if at all an operations manager goes to the to attend a certain seminar they can uh, get uh, an opportunity of merging up with another company so that they uh, improve on their operations so that is to do with the career opportunities then now we moving on to the current trends we are looking at what's happening today and the point one we are having 96 of the top 100 uh, industries in the us and uh, china have large uh, dollars worth of exports so with this i have uh, continuing to explain the saying exporting industries are characterized by early ongoing investments in uh, advanced product and uh, process technologies now with this uh 
they're looking at uh, these industries, these exporting industries earlier on invested in the uh, the advanced product and process technologies, thus enabling them to be efficient. That's why we are having a current solution which you may call a current result as being efficiency or efficient. Like the industry is being is efficient and in that it's having that solution of efficiency whereby they're saying do they, they're doing something at the lowest possible cost so them be, having invested in these advanced product and product technologies uh, they are producing at a lower cost and um, thus being efficient then we are moving on to the second point which is productivity is increasing and has become a basis for competition now with this uh success uh domestically no there are two points uh first of all let's explain the first one the same productivity is increasing and has has become a basis for competition now with this even productivity you being productive that means yeah you can be able to compete so without production that means you can't compete because you won't be having products to sell and they're saying success uh success domestically and globally is dependent on the ability to compete on many fronts including operations uh for example the internet like uh, they're saying it is easy to find potential customers like people are going to buy your products but hard to deliver like somebody may advertise something online and this person uh, it becomes very hard for him to deliver it but uh, the uh, current solution to that is efficiency efficiency if uh, i sorry effectiveness whereby doing the right things to create the most value for the organization now this is to do with uh, delivering the product to customers despite the fact that you may advertise your product on internet uh, you make make sure that it is very easy for you to deliver it to the customer because it's very hard to to deliver these products at times so in that you're creating value for your organization just imagine if jumia decides to deliver phones uh i uh, and I mean decides not to deliver your phone it won't create a good image on its part so if at all they are advertising online and you go there uh, you select the phone you put it on the order and it gets to come that means if it comes to you that means they're creating value for the organization so in that they're being effective so moving on to the third point which is outsourcing of manufacturing and service and of manufacturing and services now with this uh, saying uh, countries that do it that is china and india like they are uh, doing it and it's accelerating so with this is to do with outsourcing as uh, you allowing another firm to produce on your behalf now what is the importance of this it creates value in that quality quality is advanced so maybe quality you can say it is divided it may be divided by yeah fine a price but at least you get to def divide quality like you may get maybe usa to assemble this germany to assemble this china to assemble this so in the end you realize that you have divided your like quality because each country will produce according to its capacity it can produce that at its best so meaning you have divided quality and you end up getting a quality product so we are moving on to the history of production and operations. We're having the cottage system. With this, people used to produce from their courtyards. Then industrial revolution, uh, it was uh, developed in England uh, to replace the human factories. Then we're having civil wars. Now with the civil wars here, yeah, uh, the history, history just sh like shows that there was great expansion of production capacity during that period of the civil wars then uh, we having the scientific management now with the, the fact scientific management uh uh you remember frederick taylor those who are doing uh, principles of management uh with the uh, frederick taylor introduced this uh, scientific management in that it was the first management theory after the industrial revolution so with this theory it showed the systematic study of the relationship between people and uh, tasks for purpose of redesigning the work processes for higher efficiency that was to do with this scientific management then we having a moving assembly line 
Uh, here operations are subdivided in two a number of smaller tasks that uh, are assigned to workers and it uh, replaced the sequence uh sorry that are assigned to workers and these workers are placed sequentially in a fixed order and the product is moved from one worker to the other by a conveyor then uh, from there we went to how thrown studies now with these they were studies or experiments so again in the poem that is principles of management under the behavior yeah behaviors behavior science school elton mayo yeah the human relations school by health elton mayo so it was under the behavior science school uh, but uh, under the human relations school you know behavior science school serving other theories but under it we looked at the human relations school by elton mayo whereby he conducted the the house house throne studies or you can call them experiments experiments to put in place uh frederick taylor's ideas in practice and then we are having operations research research sorry that is self-explanatory then uh global competition still self self-explanatory uh service revolution whereby services came in as the industrial revolution came in global competition just globally people competing operations research yeah that's that we are researching on the operations basically then uh, we have mass customization now with mass customization it is like producing in large volumes but but basing on what customers yeah, have uh, demanded so that is with uh, mass customization like for example someone may want a jersey and uh, this person may want a jersey for maybe a jersey having uh, henry a jersey having Messi. you get so they are customized basing on customers what they want but you produce them in large amounts like you make so many jerseys but they are customized this is for this customer this is for this customer but all in all it's the same product but customized then uh moving on to the next slide that is uh uh some current production management challenges uh we have uh the challenge like uh currently there is a challenge of sustaining quality management initiatives like it is difficult to sustain quality management and there is also the challenge of uh, consolidating operations relating from mergers like here uh, once you merge with somebody like let's say like coca-cola coca-cola we have coca-cola uganda kenya and there are others so coca-cola as a main company uh, as I, I mean a company in the u.s merged with other other, other branches in some other, other countries so if i told the richard came where but their productivity is not the same like the coca-cola in u.s is differing from the one in uganda uh so from from uh, branch accounts those who are do accounting yeah, branch accounts the consolidated statement is the same as you as you may say consolidating operations like after them merging what is their end product is it the same so there's a challenge there consolidating version resulting from mergers so there's a problem there whereby they may produce different products after merging and then we're having a challenge of uh, speeding up the time to get new products to the market like how fast do they bring new products to the market yeah? so that can also be a challenge whereby they're slow on that or something like that so those are the current challenges we're having then uh there's uh developing uh, flexible production systems to enhance mass customization of products and services so they're having a product of being flexible in order to produce these many jerseys of different customers having messi henry and Nelly, what and what here yeah, basing on customer uh what they want here yeah. And then we're having developing and integrating new technologies like adopting new technologies here yeah. uh, it's very difficult for them to adopt with the new technologies because they may bring in a new technology and this firm doesn't know how to use it currently yeah. like because of the COVID situation they may bring in some new technology somewhere and the firm is find, finding difficulty in using it then we're having uh, managing global supplier production distribution networks now with this it's uh very hard it's very hard to manage the global suppliers like 
how how fast products can reach can reach you basing on your global supplier a uh, person from china rwanda what and what basing on the current situation i told you current management problems currently so currently we are having such a problem like person is deep uh distributing a product late then we're having a problem of outsourcing now with this it's to do with uh more you, you, you rely on another farm to produce for you something like if i told you uh, you were to make a phone you match up with another like the iphone the iphone it can be uh the, like the apple the company is in america but they assemble stuff from what china so they're using china uh for outsourcing yeah for outsourcing so such things yeah so there's a problem in that like they're lacking maybe proper uh, proper farms to help them in the outsourcing so that is that with uh, the current challenges thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel